Uh, hi, everybody. This is Nalini Elkins with Industry Network Technology Council. I hope you can um, all hear me um, okay. Uh, maybe uh, somebody can please send me a note to let me know that you're that you're hearing me okay. Um, and um, as always, uh, uh, this webinar is being recorded and um, uh, ending um, uh, foils uh, at uh, uh, and the recording at the end. Uh, thanks so much. Yes, great. I'm getting I'm getting messages that you're that you're hearing me. Perfect. Um, okay. So so let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is um, a collaborative project between India Internet uh, Engineering Society and Industry Network Technology Council, uh, both of whom are nonprofits. And we have funding uh, uh, from APNIC. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we all, um, of course, have had funding from Aaron in the past, and and we have funding from Aaron uh, for uh, what actually is the basis for this particular webinar. So it is a joint uh, effort. And um, so you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get started. Um, so the idea is, is that uh, for enterprises, we'll provide training uh, and do an in-depth analysis of security and application conversion. And this particular effort is the analysis of security. And you will see a very different idea of security uh, presented in this presentation uh, than you may have heard before. Um, and that is because, one, this is um, uh, in large part Nalini's opinion. <laughs> so please, please um, uh, uh, give me feedback as to if you agree or not. And, and I'm, I'm only sort of kidding. Um, you know, we have discussed this with a number of enterprises and as well as a number of folks of course on the uh, on our ipv6 deployment team and the other folks helping with the aaron grant it is a different perspective than what you will hear and and that's because it's a very enterprise focused perspective um and it's uh, and it's talking about different aspects of it than you might have heard before but which I believe makes sense. And so please let me know if you agree. These are the classes we've had so far. Uh, we're all the way down to the introduction to IPv6 security. Uh, and then we'll go on into doing trace reading and troubleshooting. So uh, yes, and that's also extremely fun. So let me hear, yes. Okay, so here's a, a, a really few words about me. I'm gonna flip past this very quickly. I've been doing this for way too long, but frankly, I still get up in the morning and am raring to go. So um, having the time of my life. So, so let's let's get into this. Um, so, so when we first started working on this project, what we were thinking about is, yes, there are traditional ways of looking at security traditional ways of looking at IPv4 security and IPv6 security. But when large enterprises in particular think about security, they have a slightly different perspective. And what they're looking at is, is kind of the overall picture of what happens inside their enterprises. And, and so, so they're looking at a range of topics, and, and these are they. I will be going through each one um, and, and give you a, 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 my, our take on, on how IPv6 uh, may impact uh, this area and, and our opinion as to how. But let's, let's level set first, because a number of the discussions that I've had with people uh, people say, you know what, IPv6 security is not really different from IPv4 security. And and I'm kind of like, wait, wait, wait. No, it's a lot different. But I think what we're talking about is very different things. Um, if you get to a steady state 
that is, if you have IPv4 only or IPv6 only, the, the point that a lot of people are making may well be true. Uh, indeed, indeed, the differences are not that many. I don't even agree there, but far less far less when you get to steady state. That is when you have a single stack. Having said that, the time that it's going to take many people, most people, if not all people, to get from IPv4 only to IPv6 only, um, it will be well beyond um, certainly my lifetime. And who knows? Uh, you know, maybe well into my daughter's lifetime. I don't know, you know. I mean, I'm going to tell you something is um, um, people have, have predicted the death of COBOL for how many years now? It's still around, still growing. So so I don't know. And And so what I'm going to talk about a lot is that state when we are really not at an IPv6 only uh, state or steady state. Um, so, so a lot of what I'll talk about is the problem that, that come either during migration or because of the new things. So, so that's, that's, my, that's my perspective. And so you are forewarned. <laughs> so even even when you go to a an IPv6 only network, there will still be some vulnerabilities which are different, and that has to do with um, some of the new types of protocols that are there. It, I mean, there's no question. It just makes sense, right? If anything new will have new vulnerabilities, that's all there is. To it. And we'll talk about some of those new things um, as we come along. The, but the bigger problem in my mind is the additional complexity introduced by both uh, having to support multiple stacks and the very fact that you are doing a transition. And, and so then, um, uh, you know, you may have it, it, the transition mechanisms used. They have their own vulnerabilities. Dual stacking has its own vulnerabilities. It's also it's also more complex. And you know, when I write code, um, I try. I don't always succeed. I try to keep it as simple as possible because anytime things get complicated, you it's 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 inherent in the nature of things that that the more complicated it is, it's likely to have more more bugs, um, create more issues. It it that's that's just how it is, right? And so when you've got multiple stacks, multiple transition mechanisms, um, all of these things going on. Um, it's going to be more complicated. And in my opinion, we will be in this stage of additional complexity for many years to come. Um, so let's, let's start getting into the detail because it's all well and good to say security is the same or security is different. Exactly how, what are we talking about here? Where is it different? How is it different? So, so at many enterprises, people are using many different kinds of platforms and access methods. Um, enterprises are, endpoint organization. Um, they are not uh, ISPs. They're not the AT&Ts and Comcast of the world. They're sitting at the end point. And when you're at the end point, what do you have a lot of? Endpoints. 
and and right now, I mean, for heaven's sake, we've got a ton of things, right? Um, we've got cell phones, we've got IoT, we've got um, uh, servers, we've got clients, we've got, P I mean, all kinds of things. So, so there's a plethora of both endpoints and ways to communicate to those endpoints one from the other. Um, it could be a VPN. Uh, it could be across across the internet, and then you might have proxies. It, you could be s throwing all this stuff into the cloud. You could have virtual machines. And and what the problem then becomes is that is that each of these platforms has probably a slightly different way of describing the same thing or they may not have uh the same thing they may they may support of a, a subset of what's required so really really what i think we need to do is we need to think okay on an overall basis for example what are the firewalls we need for let's say um, uh, neighbor discovery and uh, where where does it this rule need to sit does it need to sit at the router does it need to sit at the endpoint does it need to sit at both that's what i think the kind of thinking we need to do and then see and then go back go back to whatever endpoint we're at whatever access method and whatever and say one do we have it and and how do you code it if you have it if you don't then we need to you know make an enhancement request or whatever or somehow get it or block it elsewhere but but all of this stuff um is is as i say it's uh, the devil is in the details um the other thing that we have to think about is we, you know, I mean, people think of different things when they think about security devices. And you will notice <laughs> that I have left out NAT because <laughs> much as some people think that NAT is a security device, um, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been um, uh, indoctrinated or subscribing to the IETF uh, mindset long enough that I will, I refuse to put NAT into us as a security device. <laughs> Having said that, of course, we have so many. We got firewalls, you know, IPS, IDS, all kinds of stuff. And, and you'll notice I've thrown fraud detection out in there. A lot of folks have fraud detection devices sitting very, you know, very, very close to the edge, as they should. Um, that's where we are right now. Um, do, do we think proxies are security devices? Maybe they, they a lot of times they do a bunch of stuff. Um, VPNs, I, I, yes, I'm going to say VPNs do fall into this category. And, and I'll tell you from a number of discussions, there are things that are different about how VPNs operate over IPv6. Um, and so we need to think, is that really what we mean in terms of security? So, so, so we need to think, okay, so we've got all these rules, these fundamental things we want to get in. How do we implement them in an IDS or do we put it in an IPS? And what, what do we do? And especially, especially if we're doing things with uh, stuff like a uh, cascaded structure, a lot of folks that I know they'll have um, a cascaded firewall structure and they'll have a red zone, green zone, whatever, and a DMZ, you know, or you could also have like sandboxes where anything that's got um, a, a, a thing attached to it or an email or a link, it's all opened in the sandbox and before it comes to you and maybe that's done at the dmz i'm just as i say i'm just i mean people do things a lot of different ways but i will guarantee you a lot of times when i walk into a site um they'll have a topology pasted on their you know on their walls 
showing. Okay, here's here's our our structure. So so how do we do this? How do we do this for IPv6 right now? Right, we've been doing this for IPv4. Do we have the same rules? Do we have different rules? Um, and where do they belong? And it it all I think needs to be thought out. And and you know I have looked for a really good paper on people, somebody who's laid this out. And frankly, I've not found one. I've, and maybe if somebody knows of one, do let me know. Because what I've found is, is sometimes in a presentation, people will give like, like, you know, they'll show a picture of a cascaded structure and, and have like one uh, uh, sheet saying, yes, people do this and they need to think about it. I'm like, yeah, and that's us. And, and what do you mean think about it? What does that mean, think about it? How do we think about it? And and especially um, if you are not that comfortable with IPv6, then how do we think about it? And so, so as I said, this is, this is we, if we're gonna actually move forward and, and move forward securely and carefully and cautiously, then I think this is the kind of thing we really need to think about is, what where what rules are we going to have and where is it going to be on the client platform is it going to be in the router is it going to be in the standalone appliance and how is it going to be and a lot of people today they what they have is duplicate rules and and that's totally fine in some ways um you know um because yeah sure it's a it's a i just i suppose it's a double check on yourself but 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 let's do it knowingly and not unknowingly. So we're not just we we don't just have thousands of rules um, uh, everywhere because um, there's things that appropriately belong in one place uh, or another. And so, so that's why this is what I say about the additional complexity and the thought that has to be given uh, to to migration and and. So, so these firewall rules, for example, that I'm talking about, um, not only do you have to change your existing firewall rules to say, yeah, whatever I was doing for IPv4, I want to do that for IPv6 also, but there's new protocols. There's neighbor discovery, multicast listener discovery, and and um, it's interesting whether people think whether DHCP v6 is, is is a different profile. I'm going to say yes because it has different functionality and and maybe different options. But there's 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 definitely differences. And so things like all these different kinds of messages that you're going to get out, you need to think: Do I want to block them? What part? Of the router advertisement do I want to block where do I want to block it and for example do I have RA guard on my router do I have DHCP v6 guard on my router how how do I integrate that into my existing um, uh, system and life and 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 I think all this stuff has to be sought out and laid out before you before you start you know embarking on on your migration journey and so a lot of what i'm talking about is not the holy grail of when you've actually gotten to ipv6 only but one that enormous nightmare of thinking and planning that you're going to have to do before you start your journey or as you start your journey and and keep growing and maintaining um, you know along along the way and 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 here's you know FYI some more IP, ICMP v6 messages and you know I I kind of disagree with um, having put all these new things into ICMP, I actually think we should have created an entirely new protocol that would have made it clear to people, people, we're talking about something very different. This is not at all um, 
um, what we're what we're doing is is um, you know we need to think about ICMP um, uh, uh, you know ICMP um, uh, v6 in a very different um, way because uh, there's a lot more uh, messages um, so um, the other thing that I think is new uh, with IPv6 is new and changed addressing schemes. Um, we have to think, you know, before we were maybe blocking or allowing um, a V4 subnets or VLSM or, you know, whatever. Whatever we were doing, we've got to do it differently now. Um, you know, you'll, you'll notice there was a lot of controversy it, with the cloud folks about using CIDR. It, yeah, there's no CIDR in IPv6. And so you have to think about v6 differently. You have to think, do we want to block multicast also? What about privacy addressing? How, are you going to handle it? Are you going to block it? Are you going to allow it? And then if you're at the end point, if you're within your own network, are you going to think about link local? And do you are there? Do you want to just let that go freely? Is there any part of link local that you want to block? And um, I I do see things like deprecated addressing schemes still coming out. Um, I'm trying to remember what I just saw the other day. It was something like um, uh, as I say, I'm gonna I'm gonna. It, it might have been like um, site site local unicast something like that, that was still being used. And, um, and I'm talking about in the past few months, I saw that. Um, so do you want to think about that and blocking blocking EULAs? Because the thing is, just because something is deprecated doesn't mean I can't put it into uh, a packet. So, um, so here, so this is this is what I'm saying is um, you you we're gonna we're gonna go down and we're gonna think about do we want to have endpoint rules and when do you put it in if you're gonna do it in your gold build and what is this endpoint is it a, is it an OS is it an IoT device is it somewhere is some virtual machine in the cloud what does it support and then what do we do in terms of routers and switches? You know, do we also, as I say, we talked about DHCP, V6 guard, RA guard. Do we want to think about rate limiting um, for ICMP um, uh, and for for um, uh, RA, stuff like that? Um, then it gets more complicated, of course, when you get into standalone equipment. Um, if you've got like some kind of intelligent firewall, what, okay, so so what do you exactly mean by intelligence? How much intelligence? Is it stateful? How are you going to handle it? It's just, as I said, I don't have a ton of answers. I have a ton of questions. Um, and so, but I think we, this is something that we need to really be thinking about um, and and researching. The other thing I see a lot is is people sticking um, a a, a, cl a a, a firewall controller uh, or a load balancer in front of their firewall, you know. And so this structure is kind of a very common thing that I see um, that we need to, to think about. The other thing that I ran into when I started talking to um, people about this is, is people, first people are like, oh my God, I wish you hadn't told me any of this. <laughs> but then they're like, well, I don't know exactly what we do in our network. Because part of the problem is there's a bunch of different people that are working on different aspects um, of this. And so what I'm thinking is we are preparing a survey that we would like to send out. Um, and, and what I'm hoping is that um, when we send it to you guys, um, then you will also get some of the people who are involved in doing some of this in your network to to discuss this because the thing that we're thinking is that um that maybe we need to do a best practices paper because you know i know I, you know so okay 
So NIST does an awful lot of excellent, excellent papers. And also there's a, a ton of good information in the, the, uh, the draft at uh, V6 Ops. But I'm going to say that this is um, a slightly different perspective. Um, and maybe we can add something to, to some of those from the not from uh, from from what we're doing and also it's a very it's an evolving field it things things are just it's a very it's a it's an area where it feels like every week there's something new and so do send me um you know some some um, questions or chats and say what do you think do you think that we should um we should do this you know um uh for this um so yeah so let's start talking about other stuff um audits and compliance that's another thing that that i think um people do a lot of is people do audits and compliance um at large enterprises and this is to say um to make sure that all the potential security risks are el eliminated or minimized um, and a lot of the, a lot of enterprises ask this of their vendors also, and they have a compliance checklist and so on. And some some people, uh, some enterprises go through audits um, multiple times a year. So the question is, when you get to IPv6, then if you're talking about the security risk. Are, are you clear with what those risks are? And is your auditor really clear? And so do you need to go through and see what is it they're asking? Is it, is it have they left out anything? Um, it's a, it's a, as I say, this is, this is a part of the process. Um, then we get into threat detection. And this is an area where there's a bunch, that, okay, so, so I get into arguments about this with people. Um, uh, let me say, okay, because, because some people think that this is, that what I'm saying is not necessarily true, but, it, but I know it's true. And, um, um, but I don't wanna say a whole bunch about different interfaces until we've got kind of a fix for it. Um, but I will just say, I mean, just think to yourself, is like, remember, it's like there's tunneling interfaces. So I'll just throw that out. Do you have tunneling interfaces in a pure IPv4 network? You don't, right? Well, there's a different interface. And, and so are you, do you know, even if it's um, not being used or deprecated, do you know that I can't? do stuff on that interface you don't know and so this is this is the same thing for that i that i'm going to say for penetration testing is you you need to really understand v6 and what's available on the platform what can you really do to each interface and with each interface in order to do real penetration testing um so then let's talk about risk analysis so, so I'm going to quote here from from a NIST um, draft. Um, this is an interesting area because a lot of a lot of enterprises do what they call risk analysis, and so it, basically the idea is, um, you know, if if whatever the resource is, is that going to compromise private information? Um, are we going to get fined for it? Um, is it you know if if the resource is not available, can we can we are we going to be down? So well, let me give it to you this way. So let's say that you're um, uh, you know you're a bank and your network is down because you did the conversion to IPv6, but you messed up somehow, and that part your you know your branch in in um, Kalamazoo, for example, is down. Yes, that's the risk. And, and the thing with IPv6 is 
Well, you know, you're touching an awful lot of stuff. And so unless you're going to do, I mean, so I mean, to me, it's like, you've got to do an awful lot of really good planning. Otherwise you're getting into serious risk territory. And so maybe the migration plan, it has to be um, one of the first things that you want to do. And, and I'll talk about change control in a moment, because of the way a lot of enterprises deal with risk is they have they have change control and the idea of change control is to minimize risk um and and so if you know so 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 really that whole topic of migration has to be dealt with and that's actually one of the webinars that i want to do uh for next year is really thinking about a migration strategy to to cut it short a lot what a lot of people think about is going inside out or outside in Inside out would be like doing your core, your entire routing structure, um, and then and then doing that first, and then letting the edges, you know, letting all your branches convert maybe one at a time, something like that. Versus you isolate like one function, one application, something like that, and um, and let that come in. As I said, this is an interesting thing. Um, it, it's an interesting way. Um, uh, to to look at um, uh, you know what you know what what you need to do, but but as I say, risk analysis is something people really talk about and think about. And here's here's some more uh, again from the NIST paper, and and I'm going to leave it for you guys to read. And it has to do with uh, the type of enterprise and your risk appetite and risk tolerance. Um, but as I say, one of the things that enterprises do is they they use change control. And I'll tell you, I mean, I, I suffered under that uh, for 10 years when I worked for an enterprise. And and a lot of times, you know how you can fix something is back out whatever you did, <laughs> that, that'll fix it. Um, and it, it, so, so it all depends, right? Is we need to have a test environment where we can test uh, really well. We need to have a good migration strategy. We need to have our our firewall strategy, and um, you know uh, uh, all of that and it, the planning. One of the things we're looking at down the road is maybe a lab where where we can um, uh, you know do some of this stuff. Um, also is, uh, you know, practice and doing cascaded firewalls and so on. But but that's, that's probably going to be a bit later. So again, let me know if that sounds interesting uh, to you. Um, so another thing which, which gets thrown into security, which, but which I'm not so sure uh, really belongs there, is root cause determination. Um, uh, it, so, so to me, root cause determination is really problem determination. Let me know if you guys think that 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 um, I'm not on track. But part of the problem with um, with problem determination, but in some ways this was a problem with IPv4 too, is that you need to understand the protocol if you're going to do problem determination. And what I see a lot of times is there's really a lot of people who really don't understand IPv4 and TCP and UDP and how they all interact. And you throw IPv6 with, you know, neighbor discovery, this, that, and the other thing. And, and then it gets to be a training uh, nightmare for a lot of people, training and understanding. But there's some fundamental things, too, is if you're keeping track of, of addresses and trying to correlate those to what you see in a packet trace and the privacy address changes, what are you going to exactly trace back? And so that gets complicated. And then uh, I, I talked about this last time is things like back to my Mac is if you've got something like a V6 packet way deep inside a V4 header. And, and so so, so this this is very complicated, and so you could have problems at any layer along this track. 
and so 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 this this whole level of complexity becomes um hard to debug and then when it's hard to debug then you get into things like um um uh, how am i going to determine the root cause because i'm having trouble you know troubleshooting um yeah so in fact that's what the next two presentations will be on is is reading wireshark traces we'll read tons of them over and over again and doing going through some problem determination cases you know i'll show you stuff uh, because to me that's my favorite way of troubleshooting is is just go to the packet packets don't lie but a lot of people i know really um uh, you know hesitate to do that because they're not that comfortable so hopefully we'll get you a little bit more comfortable too. Um, so another thing, and this falls into the whole area of, um, well, two areas. One is the area of gotchas. <laughs> and two is like, what do you have to think when you're doing migration? And what can maybe bite you um, in the rear end when you're, when you're starting to get out? So one of the things that a lot of people do um and and we'll talk there's a bunch that we want to talk about that in the whole application conversion area but in terms of security you can actually use ip addresses inside a tls certificate and i'll show you i have a screenshot <laughs> of where you can do that um the other thing is you've got other apps um like mq series who have a client configuration um and with IP addresses, and that's just one. There's a ton of these kind of things. You know, some some people give a unique IP address to each application. In, for example, inside an IBM mainframe. But it, so you, so this is a conversion thing, and you have to think: Have I changed everything correctly? And um, and during that, in that meantime, am I subject to some security flaws? So. So a lot of people, when when I say that about the the alt address, they're like, really, I don't use, I don't do that. Well, it's, it's, yes, you may not do that, but take it from me, some people do. And so here it is, and you can go to the Red Hat site, and you can see their their description of how to use it in using for the 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 subject alternative name field. And I'm telling you, I I. I've, I've done this myself and I've seen it when I'm creating a self-signed cert, you know, you can, you can definitely do it. So, so, so be wary that if you've got a V4 address inside a cert, um, it, it's possible it's not going to work. So when we get into privacy and confidentiality, um, really a, a, the thing people think about, um, or at least what I think about, in IPv6 is privacy addressing. And so if you've got anonymous addressing and it, the address changes all the time, the problem becomes, again, as we said before, root cause determination. And also, what are you gonna put in your firewall for these? You gonna put in the whole prefix? I mean, what, you know? Um, and so, so this is this is an interesting area, and there's implementation differences, um, certainly on the platform, and certainly whether cloud vendors uh, support it or not. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not opposed to privacy addressing at all, and and I totally support why they did it, or why we did it. <laughs> Let me put it that way, um, it, because we are all. A part of this whole protocol community, because um, you can you can look at the at the at the MAC address, and um, yeah, and as you know, there's a lot of efforts to randomize that MAC address, and um, yeah, the, you may want to go to the the uh, uh, the session on that at the upcoming IETF on this, um, uh, uh, and some some vendors already are randomizing that MAC address. So, so, so you can do device specific attacks uh, on all this. So, so this is this is kind of a this is a work in progress, and um, um, so it will be great 
uh, to have um, some questions um, in the, uh, the, you know, in, um, uh, you know, for, for all this. Um, I'll read a couple of the things um, that, that people have sent. And as I say, we'll have surveys also. Or if you want to talk, go ahead and raise your hand and, um, uh, and then you can, I'll unmute you so you can speak um, yourself. So um, I have a couple of questions. There's some, um, some interesting NIST documents that have been sent. I'll take a look at them and see, see how much um, uh, they cover up what we've talked about. Thank you so much. And um, um, it, yeah, I will say that, you know, I, the NIST documents have been absolutely wonderful. And uh, oftentimes they do cover uh, portions of what we're talking about. Uh, so that, so thank you very much uh, for that. And we'll send out a survey as to see what people are, are up to right now. So any other any other questions at this point or thoughts on uh, if you think this kind of um, survey might be might be useful to you or this kind of thinking on migration is is useful um, or anything else you want to discuss. No, everybody. I've put. I've. I've floored everybody. <laughs> so, okay. Well, then. Um, um, e, so I guess then. Then um, we can. Um, we can end a little bit early. You'll get fifteen. Oh, oh here. Okay, I do have. Let me. I have one question. Okay. So, if so, Cindy, um, if you want to speak, I've unmuted you. You'll have to unmute yourself. Hi there. I just wanted to know if you could give me your opinion about different IE or IPv6 certifications. Because I've seen a couple, like there's a, I think it's called Hurricane Electric, or there's one that's called like Certis 6. Um, do you have opinions on those? Have you taken any of the tests? Oh my goodness. Yeah, no, um, no I know what you're talking about. And uh, yeah. you know, I don't, I, I'm sure they're all very good. You know, I don't, and, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna venture to give an opinion on, on something like that. You know, I, you know, the more knowledge you have, the better, but, but, um, yeah, I, I think I'll stay away from that question, <laughs> if you'll excuse me. Um, so, yeah, no, everybody does a great job. Um, so, um, okay, so I've got another, I do have a question, and, um, Okay, so a step-by-step -step guide for initial implementation would be a really good topic for enterprises. Yeah, that's a really, really, that's, yeah, I think that's a really good um, thing to say. One of the things that, that we are thinking about doing at INTC is to, to commission maybe five or 10 topics and um, we'll fundraise for um, some money to actually fund some folks to to write them, because the a lot of the folks who've been working were a little bit out of um, we're a little bit out of bandwidth <laughs> on uh, on doing this, and so and I think that might be a really good way because and maybe taking into account some of the things I talked about is like okay so but I think we'll have to break that up. Is like okay if you do a cascaded firewall this is what you should do it you know these are the rules and if, if you're thinking about what you know what should be where where I think frankly firewalls and that whole thing that could be two or three papers in themselves because it's a really complicated area and, and I know for a fact like some of the, the rules in the cloud vendors they're quite immature right now um, they'll, they'll get it they'll figure it out but for now it's quite immature um, so, so we need to think about that, but that's, that's great. And I have one person who I know is an enterprise and he said that he would be happy to give a presentation on migration to implement G6. And you know what? I know he, he's a, he's a wonderful person and I am totally going to take him up on his offer. So look forward to presentations by actual 
enterprises on doing their migration. And I think, Ben, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and the rest of you guys, um, you know, if, if you want to be involved with us, if you want to do presentations, if you want to do labs, and especially if they have to do with um, your enterprise, um, then we totally, you know, want to do that. Because that's what this is for, is, this, is the whole group is so that we can all learn uh, from, from each other. So, yeah, and, and, and go ahead and, and contact me offline or contact the IIE SOC people offline if you want to do that. Um, you know, we really, really uh, I love that. So, okay, well, thank you guys all for your time. And if you have questions afterwards, please do let me know. And um, we will be doing the IPv6 uh, troubleshooting and trace reading class next. But that will be uh, in August. So thank you all for your time.